welcome everyone to this session. Um, I welcome you to uh, this uh, prophetic teaching that I want to quickly do as a charge, even for many of us in this glorious season of Easter. This is a season where God wants to move us from one pedestal to another, where we move out of darkness into light, where we make a transition successfully from the kingdom of limitations, struggles, pain, setbacks, failures, which are all products of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, a translation that will bring about an elevation into the establishment for which God has created and enacted for us, even as it is this glorious day. Um, I will start this charge by taking us to our main text, which is in the book of John. And I will read very quickly the Gospel of John, chapter 1, from verse 1 all the way to verse 5. And I quickly read. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. King James Version of the Gospel of John. I would like to uh, make some things very clear because there are questions that people have been asking regarding, you know, who God is and how does he operate or function? How does our faith connect with God, our belief system? Because there are people who have been Christians for a while, but they don't have results. And one of the reasons they don't have results is because they don't understand who God is. They don't comprehend how God operates and the principles that powers their existence. So let me lay some very basic fundamental things because these days I've become, I, I personally have become very bored with a lot of things I've listened to, I've heard people teach. There's so much doctrinal teachings out there and many at times they look very, they sound very sluggish and wasteful to me because they don't tend to bring me closer to my expectations or to my desires in God. And the manifestation that normally it will produce is not complementary simply because people are listening to foundational teachings but they are not able to transform or translate it into actionable intelligence or wisdom or practical application that can bring about changes in their lives. Remember the main challenge challenge we face is a faith challenge because we do not know how to connect with God and take advantage of that which has been given already. So let's go back to the beginning because John did a very beautiful intro here and I would like to make it very clear here and I want everyone to listen. First, God is three persons, three different individuals. God is the Father, God is the Word or the Son of God and God is the Holy Spirit. God spoke to his people in the book of Deuteronomy. Say, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. That word one does not mean one person. It simply means in agreement. So we are going to connect that to the agreement that you need to unify in your own personal life in order for you to have God manifested. When you invite God into your life, you invite the Father, you invite the Son of God, being the Word of God, and you invite the Holy Spirit. These three agree. These three are in, a, in alignment. These three are one. And when we mean one, not one individual, because there are three distinct persons, but they are in alignment, they are in agreement. And when the three of them are in agreement in your life, you will have results. It will be automated and it will be instantaneous because it cannot, because God cannot fail. God's word cannot falter. God is omnipotent. That means he has all the time. He is potentially releasing results on the go. God is always having results. God is infallible. God's word cannot fail. If God has given you a word, it will come to pass. If God has spoken, he will bring it to pass. Everything that God is, is, is guaranteed to have results in our lives. But the reason why many at times we don't have those results is because we do not understand or comprehend the alignment and the agreement of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our personal lives. So now let me explain it to you very practically. Number one, let me introduce the Father. The Father is life. The Father is life. He is the first in the Godhead. The Godhead is equal. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
are equal. Remember when Jesus told the people, you know, in the days where he walked in Jerusalem, he said, I and my father are one. And they got upset. They said you made yourself equal with God. Because for you to say you and your father, you are one. That means you are saying you are the son of God. And that makes you equal. Why? Because the Godhead is equal. But in priority, the father comes first. So the father comes first. Next is the son of God. And then lastly is the spirit of the living God. So the father is life. He is the intelligence of the Godhead. Every idea, everything that is done, every master plan, every blueprint, he comes up with it. The Father is the source of all things. The Father is the one from whom all things emanate. The Father is the first. And that's why he uses that name and status simultaneously. Because the Father is his name in the same notation is also his status because he is the source, he is the head. So the father is first. And that's why what Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this, our father, which art in heaven, you start with the father because he's the head. But for the father to bring anything to be produced, released, manifested in your life, he has to do it through a medium. And that now brings us to the word. The father sits on a throne and controls the whole realms, the whole universe from one spot. He is stationed in one spot. And because he's stationed in one spot, from that one spot, he's able to run the whole universe. Now, for him to be able to run the whole universe and get things done, he has to errand someone. Now, his errand mechanism is his son. And his son is the word. The word of God is the expression of the father so the word of god became to on flesh dwelt in our midst and we literally held his hands he was tangible to us made manifest as jesus the very son of god so he is the word so the word of god is the expression of the father and since he's the expression of the father the one thing he desires is to exercise the father so the way he exercises the father is to exercise the life of the father so the father is life the word of god is exercising or expressing that life that is of the father and by that errand he errands him because when god opens his mouth and say let there be light or when the father say let there be light he's turning loose the son of god he's unleashing the son of god and by releasing that word the word now goes and fabricates and brings into reality into manifestation that which he has spoken so that which started its journey as a thought in the mind of the father becomes an errand assignment that is executed through the word and once the word is spoken the word will now go and fabricate it or bring it into manifestation or into reality and when that word is brought into tangible reality or manifestation that word now has accomplished that which it has sent that's why it is it is written in the word of god he said so shall it be every word that goeth out of my mouth it shall not come back to me empty or void but rather it will return back to me and accomplish in exactness that which i have released or unleashed by speaking that word so the spoken word becomes the expression of the life of the father and that expression is the very essence of the life of god now being brought into tangible physical reality now the duration within which the father speaks a word and it returns back to him as accomplished that duration is what we call time so what is time time is the duration wherein the father speaks the word and when that word goes forth and executes exactly that which it is sent that return back because he says that word will always come back and that's why when the father sent his word or sent his son to come and die for humanity, the son came back to him. So when people like Mary Magdalene saw him when he rose from the dead and coincidentally she was just there at the right time and she wanted to hug him, he said, no, we will do that later. But now I have to go back to the father first because I'm the word. And when the word is sent on an errand, the word must return to the sender first. And that sender is the father because the father controls the whole universe from his throne. But when he sends an errand, his son has to go. His son is the one who serves him. 
So for you to be a servant of God or a son of God, because we are all sons, both men and women. So I'm speaking to everyone. There is no gender in the spiritual realm. Gender is only something that is housed in our physical body. But in the spiritual realm, there is no gender. So we are all sons of God. Now, for you to be a bona fide son of God, you have to be one that God can errand. And that errand means to serve him. Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Now, loving him is proven by obedience or compliance. He said in another place, not them that say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter, but they that do it the will of my father and how do you know the will of the father the will of the father is expressed through the word of the father so the word of god unto you is the will of the father and when you comply you not only bring about a manifestation of that word that has been spoken to you but also you bring about your sonhood you become a son so sons are compliers jesus said there were two people who were sent out one said i will go the other one said i will not the first son who said i will go got on the way and he went somewhere else even though he had originally said he was going to do the father's beating but the second son even though originally said he wouldn't do it changed his mind and now changed direction and went exactly and did that which he was errandered to do and jesus asked the pharisees which of these two is actually a son and they said he was a second one because the first one was sent even though he agreed he was going to do it he took no action and that is the life of many of us we hear god we claim we come to church we give our time and effort but when we hear that instruction we do not do we do what is convenient we do what we want and we wonder why there is no manifestation the son of god serves the father the son of god does the beating of the father the son of god will never fail the father the son of god does perfectly everything the father wants he crosses every t he dots every i so the the son of god is a complete compliant individual he was so compliant that he was willing to shed his blood on the cross for you and i even though it was the will of the father and it was not convenient to him he cried in the garden and he said not my will but let thine will be done so he was saying i do not enjoy going to go and die for humanity but at the end of the day i have decided that it is my place as the son to always do in perfection what the father wants and based on that perfection of compliance i am going to the cross i am going to go and do that which you sent me to come and do so the son of god is the express image or the expression or the exercising of the life of god so when god the father speaks the son of god simply expresses it that expression is what produces the results or the manifestation that we see in the physical so when the father said let there be light the son of god did not think about it he did not process it he did not look if it was convenient to make a sun or a star that was going to glue it because that's the primary light source for our universe he just went ahead and he produced it following the blueprint of the image that was in the mind of the father remember the bible says it's the express image so there's an image in the mind of the father so when the father speaks that image is like a blueprint it's like a map if you know anything about architectural designs every building is built after a map has been drawn after a sketch has been done after an architect has produced a final work of what that house will look like in manifestation then they take it to the board there is a local board that approves building and zones them accordingly and based on that they will look at it and see if the building falls into in line because the land may be yours but you can't just erect any infrastructure on it without without the zonal authorities approving it the approval of that building you because you don't carry the physical building there there is no means and it's not possible to do so what you take there is what a blueprint the blueprint carries the data on exactly what you want to put up there and then it also carries the measurements of the height the flaws the quality of material that we invested how many how many floors it of course it will go if there's going to be a lift installed everything is going to be all penciled down there and then the board will look at it and then approve it if they do not approve it they will tell you why then you go back and make changes so the mind of the father is where all the blueprint is the son of god is the one who will bring it to pass now when blueprints are approved then you take it to your civil engineer he's the one that will now take the map and follow it if he deviates from it that building can be pulled down 
because it was approved based on what was on ground. Now, the approval board doesn't look into whether you use tiles or marble or put extra lights. They are not interested in that. Those are just ex- aesthetics. What they are looking at is the superstructure. You must follow the superstructure. The floors must be compliant. The quality of concrete must be compliant. Everything. So when the father thought of his son that is going to provide light in our solar system, he had already fabricated in his mind, in his imagery of the size of that sun, the adequacy of the light that is necessary to light up our solar system, the distance of the sun from the planets, the distance of the sun from the earth. If it's too close, it will burn up. If it's too far, the earth will freeze up. All these are the things that he had already calibrated and calculated. God did an exceptional, perfect calculus based on the laws of physics. Of him is the source of that life and the source of any physics that there could be. And based on that, he now said, let there be light. And once he said, let there be light, the son of God read his mind because he's the expression of the image that is in the mind of the father. And because he's the express image of of God, he is able to read the image and he knows exactly what the father wants and then he fabricated the son that you and I are enjoying every other day. And the reason being that the father is life. Everything that is in existence came from the mind of the father. That's why the father is responsible for the intelligence. But the son of God is responsible for the execution. Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Because the father sent Gabriel with a word to go and tell her, you are going to conceive the son of God. And she said, how in the world is that even doable? Since I have not engaged in any sexual behavior and seed has not been planted into me. So how in the world would in nine months I give birth to a human? And Gabriel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you, will envelope you. And by that envelope, or by that absolute covering of the Holy Ghost, the seed of God will be planted in your womb. And in nine months, you will produce a child. And she said, wow, amazing. And she concluded and said, let it be to me, according to your word. So that means that spoken word, she took it, she received it. And this may be the disconnect many of us are struggling with. Because when God speaks, we don't receive. When God speaks, we don't take it. We rather listen to men and their dead promises rather than us depending on the spoken living word of the living God. And still on the subject of the Holy Ghost overshadowing Mary. Let's move to the third. The Holy Ghost is light. So the Father is life. The Son of God is word. The Holy Ghost is light. He is light. The Holy Ghost is light. When Gabriel told Mary that the light was going to overshadow her, she was being told that light was going to cover her. She was going to be wrapped up in light. And that light is of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is light. Now, let me tell you something that is very interesting in this. So if the Father is light, the Son of God is word, the Holy Ghost is light. If the Father is life, and that life is expressed by the word, as the express image, that life that now, when it is now expressed, now manifests through the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost manifestation is identified as light. And that light is the spread of God. That light is the spread of God. Light always spreads. If you point light in a straight direction, what do you notice? It draws a V line. Because light will never go straight. Light will always move left and right simultaneously as it, as it is moving forward. Why? Because light is spread. One basic principle about light you need to know is this. Light does not move backwards. Light always moves forward. That's why your life needs to move forward now. That's why your life needs to gain ascendancy. That's why your life needs to, to gain momentum. And if things are not moving for you, that means there is a disconnect between the spoken word of God and the light of God. You see, that light needs to break out in your inner man. Because when God speaks, when the Father speaks, you receive of that, of that life. That life is received in your body or in your soul or in your spirit as the word. But when that word smites or strikes your soul, immediately it converts it into light. And once there is light, that light will invade your soul. It will saturate your soul. It will move forward. It will create momentum. Then it will move left and right. It will spread. That means the light is not going to just stay in one spot. That light is going to seek to saturate your whole being. It's going to flood you up like a floodgate of light. 
and that light is what will shine and darkness cannot have any say in the matter. So if darkness is still struggling with you, it's because you have not allowed the light of God to break forth. At times when I cancel people, they argue with me. And once people are arguing with me, I know they are in the dark. Because another word for argument is darkness. You see, when someone is arguing, many a times they are blind. Not because they are physically blind and their eyeballs are not working, no. It's simply because they cannot see the light of God's word that has just been sent to them. And instead of them to go and run with it and process it so that they can produce results in their lives immediately, they will rather argue and debate. And the reason they will prefer to argue and debate is because they will rather want to give you reasons why things will not go that way. Instead of them to be like a Mary, she's hearing it for the first time. But here was this young girl being visited by an angel and the archangel says, you will conceive, you will give birth and the son of God will be the result of that. And she was like, an immaculate conception, what are you talking about? Without penetration, without seedification? Gabriel said exactly because Holy Ghost is going to overtake you. He's going to envelope you. He's going to spread upon you. And once he wraps you up with his light, the Holy Seed of God will be birthed into manifestation tangibly in your physical womb. How many of us are yet to have tangible physical manifestation because we wouldn't just allow the light of God to penetrate us. We will not allow ourselves to be saturated with the light of the Holy Ghost because we will not receive the word. The word is carrying the light. That's why if you read the, from the main text I read, he said in the beginning was the word. So that's the son of God and the word was with God and the word was God. So the son of God is God. The same was in the beginning with God. So the word of God, the son of God has always been with the father, even from the beginning. Then all things were created by him. So the father uses the son of God to manifest and create anything he wants done in the universe. Because the son of God expresses the image and the blueprints that are in his mind. Whatever he thinks, he says, it manifests. And by speaking that word, by ushering that word, by unleashing that word, there is an automated release that brings about results for which the Son of God is the reason for it. And that's why he says all things were made by the word, by the Son of God, because he's the maker of all things. So the Son of God is the one who executes what the Father designed. The Father is the designer of the universe. The Father is the designer of the universe. He's the idea. He's the one behind all ideas. Ideas. But once he has come up with the originality of the idea, the Son of God is the one who now fabricates it. The Son of God is the one who now prototypes it. The Son of God is the one who now brings it into reality. And by him bringing it into reality, it now manifests. And I explained how life is measured in the physical realm by duration, and we call it time. That's why when someone is wasting your time, they're actually wasting your life, because we measure life by duration on the earth. So if I ask you your age and you, say, you tell me I'm 45, so immediately I will compute that you have been on this earth for 45 years, but I don't know how long within that 45 years you have been able to du du durationally express the image of God for your life because God has an image concerning you the Bible say he came in the volume of the book as it is written of him so that means every one of us has a book that God has already compiled before we were born and based on that book there is an there's a picture he has an, in his mind of what we were meant to do with our lives so when God birthed us or should I say caused us to be conceived in our mother's womb which he said he knew us even before we were conceived in our mother's womb there was already a purpose there was already an assignment there was already a target. There was already something we were meant to accomplish with our lives. And that thing we were meant to accomplish with our lives became the essence of our existence. And so every minute we are breathing. So when we say we are 30 years of age, we are saying I've been around for 30 years. But now I'm asking a question. For that 30 years, have you actually tapped into the exactness of that which God has created you to execute within that timeline? Because it's possible you've been squandering the duration of your life, doing things that are outside the timeline. So if you are younger than even the years I'm calling, still better for you. That means you have more time. But you don't have infinite time. You don't have indefinite time. Because time has a duration through which you must express the image and the plan and the purpose and the designation and the blueprint of the Father for your life and for your existence. So there is a timeline you, you need to run with you need to accomplish in order for your purpose to be fully realized 
So the Bible now says all things that has been made by the Father was actually done through the Word, through the Son of God. And there is nothing in existence that is existing that the Word of God was not the medium through which that life is now existing. Then in verse 4, it now says in Him, in who? In the Word is life. You see, in the word is life and that life is of the father. And he now continues and he says, and the life was the light. You see, so the light there is the Holy Spirit. So you see how the Godhead completes in him, in the word, in, in the son of God is life. And that life, when he hits you, it becomes light. That's why he now calls it the light of men. So you are meant to be the receptacle of that word because that word is carrying light. Now that light is to bring about results in your life. If you are not having results, you are lacking word. And if you don't have word, you don't have life. Now you may have your living, existing being as a person on earth being alive, but you are not accomplishing the durations. You are not taking advantage of the physicality of that life. You are not taking advantage of the duration of your existence because purpose is not being accomplished. And when life is void of results, it becomes a concern. It becomes a burden because we were created to produce. We were created to have results. That's why Jesus made it very clear, very succinctly. He said, if any man must come to me, he must believe and he must do the will of him that sent me. So it is not enough for you to just hear Jesus. You need to do what he will have you to do because it is in that compliance that that light is maximized and with that light you will have the results you are looking for light will always produce because light moves forward and light moves sideways until it saturates lights keep spreading light cannot stop so i can come to a conclusion by saying this life wants to hold word wants to express or exercise and light wants to spread what do i mean by life wants to hold to hold means to stay in one place he stays in that one spot the bible only records twice that he actually left there and the first one he records clearly for us was when he came down to mount sinai to meet with his children and met with moses and gave him the commandments and then the second time was ezekiel chapter one when ezekiel said he was in the water size of, of the river sheba and then he saw a majestic thing flying in the air and he was he was blown away if you read the book of ezekiel chapter one it's all documented there but the father stays in one place runs everything from one spot because life holds i will give you an example let me use it a tree for example a tree has roots it has a stalk and it has branches so in the branches is where the fruits are born and the leaves consume what light and without light they're able to bear fruit now the stalk is the body and then finally we have the root from the root comes through the sap the nutrients and the vitality for which the life of the tree is so the tree in itself the root of the tree represents the father the stalk and the body of the tree represents the son of god and then the fruit of this tree represents the holy spirit of course the fruit is that's why even fruit when you pluck it out and you keep it it further matures with light if you harvest bananas they normally are harvested green you keep them hidden you box them because the reason is because the light that touches the process continues until it ripens perfectly and if it ripens too early it may spoil before it gets to the consumer so they normally harvest them while they are still green once they've come to the fullness of the size but now it's the process for the ripening to start then they pluck it now you have to understand that that's how because the whole universe is divided into three layers now that is not part of our teaching for today but i just want to focus on something and i want to bring it out to you very clearly that the root of the tree is the life and the life stays in one place when a tree is planted you can't come back tomorrow and the tree has moved the tree will remain in that one spot and as far as that tree leaves even if it's for 100 years that particular spot is where that tree will remain because life holds life remains life stays that's why in our homes we call it a household why because the household is where the life of the inhabitants of that family all stay together and that one place where they are seated out is where that life is maintained so when life stays in a place life creates a certain level of security and preservation and sustenance in that one spot now life can go deep because the roots will go deep and deep that's why the more you know god the deeper you grow in him the bible says he's talking about the father the bible says he hides himself 
people have been challenging God to manifest himself so that they can believe. They are wasting their time. The Father is not going to appear to you because the Father is a spirit and he lives in the spiritual realm in eternity. So now, this also takes us to our next point. Life wants to hold and as a result of that, life produces eternity. Life produces eternity. What that means is life is eternal and the Father's life is eternal. It's world without end. It lives endlessly. So that's why everyone that comes to the Father wants one thing from Him. They want eternal life. You see, the Father has already given us life. And that life, we already have it. We are alive today. But what is our biggest challenge? We don't want to die. We hope to live forever. And Jesus says, okay, I'm the one who brings it. I'm the word of God. Come to me and I will give you the eternal life. And you will be able to live forever. And your purpose will live forever. And your essence will live forever. So even when you exit the physical realm, it will only be temporary. Because there will be a first and second resurrection. And then I will bring you back, even to come and live on this earth again. But it will be a new earth and a new heaven. And that's what the word of God says. And it's documented all the way to the book of Revelation. So God's life is eternal because life holds. Life holds. The life of the Father is eternal. That's why if you must know this God, you must seek him because once you have found him once you get to know him the first benefit of knowing him is to partake of that life and that life is for eternity death will not be able to hold you down and even if you experience it it will only be temporary because your spirit will live on and then later after the first resurrection and second resurrection and judgment day has come and gone then you will get to reign and rule and live on this earth eternally with him now the word of god is the expression so that means the word of god is activity. So the same way the Father's life is eternity, the Son of God's own is activity. The Word of God wants to be active. Every time you hear God, you need to act on it. Every time you hear the Father, you need to act on it. Every time you receive a word, you need to act on it. You need to believe it with your heart. You need to say it with your mouth. Then you need to act on it. That's how faith comes. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Have you noticed there is a mad competition for our attention in this world? And there are all kinds of conversation going around everywhere and the people of this world are doing everything they can to make sure they distract you from the word of the living God. You hear stories, you want to be afraid. You hear things, it wants to shake you. You hear things, you want to be anxious and worried. And all this is rooted in the spirit of unbelief because you don't truly believe that word. So you need to go back to the word of God and believe him and trust in him and depend on him. For God cannot fail. For God cannot falter. For God cannot can never ever change his mind concerning any word he has given you. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he has sent his word, he will fulfill it. He will make it good. He will make it good. That's Numbers 23, 19. He will make it good because his word will not fail. So you need to understand the word of God will produce for you, but you need to act on it. When you listen to the word and you don't do anything with it, it will not produce. The word of God needs activity for the life within it to be released. I repeat, the word of God needs to be acted upon for the life that is within it to be released to you. I repeat, the word of God sent to you needs to be received and acted upon for the life that is within it to be released to you. And when that life is released to you, it will express itself as light. And that's when understanding and comprehension. The Bible says the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. But the word that is sown by the wayside is the word that is not understood. When word is not comprehended, when word is not understood, that's what gives opportunity for that word to be stolen by the enemy. Satan is not afraid of you. He's afraid of the word of God in you. He's afraid of the word of God you believe. He's afraid of the word of God you act on. He's afraid of the word of God you are complying with because he knows that word will produce at the end. And that's why Satan is an aborter of destinies because he convinces people to stop their own advancement. He convinces people to abort their own future by simply disobeying the word of the living God. There is no compliant word that will not produce. It is only the incompliancy of the word that produces a lack of resolve or results in the life of people. God is no respecter of person. If he has given you his word, the word will come to pass. But you will need to comply with it. Because words that are acted upon is the word that will produce. And then, of course, we've already made it very clear that light wants to spread. Now, that spread is infinity. Not only world without end, but that means dimension without cessation. It will just keep going and going and going and going. So as far as there's space 
and the light is strong enough, it will keep spreading, it will keep spreading. And since this life is the light that is emanating from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills space. So the all of eternity, all of space, that light will just keep going infinity so the father's life is eternal the son of god's word is activity and then the light of the holy ghost is infinite is infinity it will keep going and going and going and that's how eternity and infinity and activity runs the whole universe so if you lack manifestation if you lack results it is simply because you have not received the word from the father and if you have not received the word go to him stay with him until that word produces and then it will unleash into the manifestation of infinity and you will see it spread out and nothing can stop it and that's what he means by when he says and that light shineth in darkness verse 5 and that darkness cannot do anything about it the darkness has no choice but to escape to dispel to discharge because light has come the devil is not afraid of you he's afraid of your light the devil is not afraid of you he's afraid of the word the devil is not afraid of you he's afraid of the life of god in you so when that word comes it's carrying the life and that life brings the light and that light will produce the results and that's how the impact of manifestations and results in your existence will follow through now let me bring it to a second dimension because now we've talked about god now let's go to man let's go to man now man is made up of what spirit soul and body now the father is life and that life produced the spirit of man which is called the inner man yes and now that life that is of the father is what gave us our spirit man so our spirit man came from the father now that word that came or is expressed through the son of god is what give us our body that's why theologians have rightly said that when god said in genesis chapter one let us make man he was actually talking about the formation process because man was already existing in him as life you see but when he now said let us make man he was now addressing the clay that he wants to take from the soil and create a shape because now he wants to fill that clay with life so that life is already in him so we were already existing in the father as life i remember a young girl who died in a swimming pool for a short period of time and when she was dead you know her lifeless body and they started praying for her and they started applying cpr eventually she came back to life and then when she came back to life she said you won't believe what i just saw and the parents was like no no you're okay you, you died she said no 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 no. i was in heaven i saw someone sitting on a mighty throne and all around him were fireflies just flying around him they were like a buzz of a billion of them just you know i could see the you know what she was saying she was saying that i could see living spirit beings all emanating from the father like fireflies and you know fireflies they, are, they have light you know so when they fly you see the light and and you see so that's that's why they call it firefly actually because it carries light it carries a flame in it so that's what she saw and she's just a little kid a six-year-old and that's all she could she, she couldn't explain you know theologically who and what she saw but she was saying there is he who sat on a throne he looks like a shape of a man he said but he was glowing with light so much light he said but i saw fireflies flying all around him so that means from the beginning we have always been with the father as life and that life is like that firefly that is in him so when he said let us make man he was actually talking about forming man and that's exactly what happened and when he formed man from the clay that was the word of god putting man into shape sculpturing man sculpting man shaping man figuring man and then man you know became a shape and then the father now released that life and the bible say he breathed into man the breath of life and then that life that is within the father moved into this clay and all of a sudden the clay came alive the clay's eyes opened and then man became a living soul so the word of god formed man then the spirit of god the light of god gave man his soul so what does that mean the spirit of man came from the father the body of man came from the son of god and the soul of man came from the holy ghost the spirit of god so the holy spirit is the one responsible for our soul the father is the one responsible for our spirit and our body came from the son of god 
So now let me read quickly from 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, very quickly. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, and these three are the Father, of course, the Word of God, yes, and then the Holy Spirit. And these three agree, these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, you see? And we are the earthlings, we are the ones that dwell on the earth. And it says the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these also agree as one. Now, the first thing I would like to let you know is this. That word, the spirit, is actually air. That word, the spirit, is actually air. You see, when he mentioned the Godhead, he said the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. But when he stepped down to the earth to speak about the weakness of the earth, he now said the spirit. So if you go and look at the original Greek translation, that word could be used because normally they transcribe it at times as spirit, but it's also actually air but in this context it's perfect as air because he's saying that the witness of the earth is air water blood so what does that mean so water is the source of life and that represents the eternal life of the father because water is eternal if you go to the book of revelation the bible talks about there's a river that flows from under the very throne of the father and it flows and flows all through heaven and then ends up in the glassy sea and the bible says it gives nourishment to everything that is in heaven everything and everything is alive it's replenished by that life because the life of god is the water of god and that water is life that's why jesus said out of your belly shall flow what rivers of living of life water of living water that is the source of life and that life is eternal that's why water can't spoil water can decay if you keep water in a spot come back in a billion years the water will be there as far as it's not forced to maybe through heat to evaporate or anything it will be there because water is eternal water can spoil water can decay water can corrupt water can deprecate the only thing that can happen to water is for an external substance to contaminate it that becomes impurities but water in its original h2o is perfect and it's eternal and that is the life of the father and that's why our spirit is representative of that life that's why when we speak of the life of the father when we speak of the life of god we refer to it as the source of that life and that life being eternal because that life is of the father and that life will exist for eternity unto eternity so water is the source of life and that life is eternal now we move to the next one in the next one it now says blood because it starts with air it says water and then blood. Then I started with water because I would like to mention the Father first. Then I moved to the Word. The Word connects with the blood. The Word is the blood. Why? Because blood is the expression of life. You see there are blood flowing through your veins. And those veins are like an express train that pushes through. You see? From the heart which the pumping station is. And that pumping station is pushing out life. That pumping station is pushing out the blood through our ventricles and it moves through our capillaries and it moves through our veins and as it begins to go through it's carrying life because in the blood is water. Water is the fluid in blood and that's why it's able to flow. If you remove the water component out of blood it's just a cake. It's like a dry sand or dry cake as it were it will, it will be hard and dry and it won't flow you see so for that life to be active remember we made we told you that the word of god wants to be active so for that activity to be that blood has to have the fluid and the life of god which is in it because blood has water that water is the life blood is the carrier of the medium and the life of god the nutritive value is in the cells the cells are in the blood the water is also in both inside and outside of those cells and as it begins to flow it carries life so when your heart is pumping we can tell you are alive because there is activity if someone is on the ground and people say is he still alive and they are not sure the very minute he moves his leg or moves his hand they say he's alive he's alive why because movement or activity is the sign of the presence of the flow of life and the flow of that life is blood so we may just want to check the pulse to see the strength of the pump of the pump action of the heart as it pushes life through your capillaries, through your ventricles, through your veins, through your heart, even onto the brain. But for that to be in continuity and in perpetuity, that life must continue. Because if trauma happens to anybody and that life flows out through an escape route and then pours out on the ground and that life is not able to return back to its source, 
because the, the life itself is meant to be cyclical. Remember when I told you about duration, that the Father sends the word, the word goes on an errand and returns. The going forth of the word and the returning of the word is what completes the cycle. And that cyclical order is what we call the physicality of life. So when you are alive, your heart pushes out that life of the blood, the blood goes out, then it comes back to you. And when it returns back to the source of where the heart pushed it out, then the heart will push it again. Because that blood, that blood is carrying food, it's carrying life, it's carrying replenishment, it's carrying nutrients, it's carrying the source of your existence, it's carrying even oxygen to the brain through the, the help of the hemoglobins. And all this process is what makes life active. That's why the word of God is the expression of life. And the expression of that life is the activity that brings that life into a place of tangible manifestation. Without the activity of that life, you are not expressing life. And without the expression of that life, you are not living. And if you are not living, that means you are not actively engaging the word of God. Every time you act on the word of God, you are actually expressing life. So the life that God gives you is the life he invests in you. And you are to utilize that life to be able to obey him, comply with him, do his word, follow through on what he has commanded you to do. And you will notice that as you are obeying God, you are actually using the life source, the life energy that is within your bloodstream. And that is what is producing the results or the manifestation or the direction of the manifestation that you are exercising. Because blood is the expression of life. And then we come to the one that is called the spirit, which is now air. Remember when the father breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living what? Soul. So air is what produced our soul. That's why our consciousness is sustained by air. When we take in air, we are actually alive. Our brain is the physical organ that our soul uses to store data, memory, information, knowledge is all kept in the physical realm in our brain. Now for our brain to leave, our brain needs oxygen. That oxygen is the very air that is sustained and that's how the Holy Spirit sustains all life consciously. Our consciousness is sustained by that air. That's why if you are sleeping, you are in a subconscious realm. You may still be experiencing spiritual activity. And that spiritual activity in itself, it is your spirit man going about in the spiritual realm and doing spiritual things. But in the physical realm, your body is dormant, but your body makes sure that oxygen still is sent to the brain because the brain must maintain its existence and your soul to be alive. If you deny the brain oxygen for a few minutes, the brain will die. And that's why you heard of terms where they say someone is brain dead. So they may plug them to a machine, but they cannot sustain themselves. And the reason they are not able to sustain themselves is because their soul is deprecating or wasting as a result of the fact that the life and the spirit of that life or the air of God is not present to deliver the results that which they were created for. So you must understand how it works. So there are three things that bear witness. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is the water, which is the source of life. The Word of God is the blood, which is the expression of that life. And then the air is the expanse of life. So water is the source of life. Blood is the expression of life. Air is the expanse of life. Air is the expanse. Why? Because air, it fills the whole space, the whole universe as it were. So that air is constantly, you know, expanding, the expanse. So space in itself is where that air functions in. And that's why it's infinite. So the blood of God is the expression of that life. The water in that blood is the source of the life that is in that blood. And that blood carries air because that blood contains hemoglobin and contains iron through which the air molecules or the oxygen molecules attaches firmly to that air. That's why when you breathe, you notice the air comes through your the sides of the chambers of your lungs. The lungs is a proteinous material that is very rich in blood. And that blood in itself moves through because that air comes through the bloodstream which is right in the walls of your lungs. And then the lungs is able to capture the oxygen that is in the air and then take it through the blood and then it flows back down and through all the way through your neck and it ends up in your brain because your brain is your soul. That's where the physicality of your soul is and that's where also your mind is and that requires requires oxygen because it was the breath of God that created the soul of man which is the mind of man and that's why the Holy Ghost is the one powering your soul the Son of God is the one powering your body and the Father is the one powering your spirit and these three agree in one eternal
eternal activity infinity the water of that blood is eternal the activity of that blood carries that water that life and then it finally is able to capture the oxygen that it feeds the mind and the soul with and that's why the three of them agree as air blood and water on the earth and in heaven as the father the word and the holy ghost hallelujah for in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the sin was the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made and in him was life and that life was the light of men and that light is shining in every darkness that surrounds you so that means these three agree as one and once they are fully represented in your life darkness has no choice but to bow and you will win in everything you do and you will overcome in everything you do and you'll be established in everything you do and you will become who god has created you and fashioned you to become in jesus mighty name we have prayed thank you for listening to mark the lion and i will see you in the next recording that will follow shortly after thanks and bye